Hello YouTube, welcome to the Fake Mook Card to Study Part 20. Yes, the men's have made a comeback, the men's are eternal, they shall never leave. For those who wonder why it took me so long, it's because of a few reasons. One, I pretty much did what I wanted to do, meaning that this series was created to expose Jason once and for all and destroy his channel, and I managed. Every relation he had that were meaningful, every single ability he had to actually monetize are gone. His channel is dead and his co-thing service is also dead. The second reason is because I wanted to sort of lightly release some pressure because as we all know, our boy Hemingway is a narcissist and therefore the second you don't check him, he immediately becomes super arrogant again and he produces men's. He's the type of cow that if you look at him for too long or if you scold him, he's very shy with his milk production, he wants to be alone by himself, but if you actually give him some space, he's going to produce buckets and buckets of delicious mints. And it's exactly what happened with his inquiry menti live streams, where he is once again back to his roots, where he lies nonstop about getting women, about his past as bodyguard, as someone who worked as a, as a bartender, all things that I'm going to be able to collect and make fun of because Jason just doesn't learn. He constantly makes the same mistakes. I have a PhD in Blahatism at this point, and I knew for a fact that if I just stopped making videos, he was going to get cocky again, say bullshit again, and that is going to give me material because I still have a ton to talk about, but fresh men are always welcome. That is for the second reason. The one that we're going to actually pay attention to today is the third reason. You see, I thought I knew everything I had to know about Jason Bloho. I thought I understood exactly how stupid he was. But he managed to do something that outdid even the stupidest things he's ever done. And that's saying a lot because Blue Blue has two black belts in stupidity. So what could he have done that was so stupid that motivated me to actually come back and release that part 20? A part 20 that was triggered and was actually, in a sense, decided upon a month and a half ago upon seeing what Bloho had done, what Bloho had said. Well, it's very simple. You see... A month and a half ago, the channel was deleted. And of course, Bloho couldn't wait to gloat because finally all of the episodes about all of the stupid shit he's ever said disappeared from the platform and the person he hates the most was finally gone. And so immediately after the deletion of the channel, he went onto his own page and told his subscribers that it was because of him. He went and told people on his page that he actually contacted his Google rep and that he got the entire page shut down. Can you believe this? I mean, he couldn't even wait two fucking hours to see if the channel was being reinstated. He had to lie. He had to make himself look good. And therefore, he also looked like a fucking Muppet afterwards because the channel went back up. But I just want to stop for a second here and say something from the bottom of my heart, something that is immediately verifiable. Bloho, I know you're watching this. YouTube doesn't care about your channel. I could stage a replica of your fat body and hang you from a rope and beat you up like a piñata and YouTube wouldn't actually lift the little finger. They don't care. Your channel is dead. You are fucking irrelevant. And actually, I have a proof of that. I made 20 videos shitting on you. When the channel was taken down, they had to review all of my videos to make sure I was actually aligned with their community guidelines. And guess what? The channel went back up without a strike and without a warning. You know what that means? That means that people at Google saw that I dedicated 20 hours of channel time to shit on you on a personal fucking level and they decided, you know what? That's fair game. We don't care about that. Jason Bla is completely irrelevant. He's been irrelevant for years. He hasn't made us a single penny. Yeah, he's fair game. We don't give a fuck. That's the reality of your existence. No one cares about you. You don't have a Google rep. Stop with the schizophrenia. We all know that. There's nothing you can contact at YouTube that is going to get my page shut down. It was something completely unrelated. And on top of that, because of course, he just couldn't stop there, right? When you do something stupid and it backfires, you have to double down, right? When you look like an idiot and you pretend to have influence when it's a lie, you have to actually try to be the winner in the end. So what did he do? What extent his stupidity managed to reach to get me to a point where I was going to actually release information about what he did in the past that was going to ruin the remainders of his life? 
What could he have said? Well, the answer is very simple. Bloho decided that the best thing to do is to follow up with a second lie, an even bigger lie. So when people were asking him, okay, well, if the page wasn't deleted because of the videos that NH makes about you, why was it deleted? And guess what he said? Bloho told people on his page that my page was deleted because of CP, because of child pornography. He went on to say that I posted CP on my page and that's the reason why it got taken down, which of course is fucking ridiculous because if it were the case, I wouldn't be here. YouTube knows where I live. I would be arrested by the police. But see, the issue with that lie is that once again, Broho, you don't fucking think. Because by saying that, you put me on the track. You always, always say things that backfire. But this one is going to be fucking spectacular. If you thought that part 19 was bad, you are not fucking ready for this one. Because... I actually, after his lie, of course, started working on a new video. It was, of course, going to focus on Bloho's sexuality because if he was going to lie about my character, I wanted to see if his character could actually take examination. And guess what happened? Guess what happened when I went down the rabbit hole of Bloho and children? I discovered something that even in my wildest fucking dreams, I wouldn't have dared to imagine. I've been making videos about this disgusting slob for two years now. I thought I knew everything I had to know about him. I thought I knew the extent of his infamy and yet I was blind. Because in the past month and a half, I have discovered things that I'm going to try and make funny as much as possible. But I don't think this episode is going to be very funny. It's going to be mostly chilling. And I'm just going to ruin your fucking life, Bloho, because you should have just shut your mouth. Why would you put me on such tracks? You know I have access to your entire fucking life. I pulled data from your messenger boxes. I catfished you several times. I contacted people from your past. You thought I wasn't going to find that shit? You know exactly what I'm talking about here, Bloho. I know you're watching this. This is here and here. This is the end for you, fucker, because yes, the one thing that you never wanted to see revealed, I actually found. So let's get into it today. This was a long introduction, but it's needed to put you in the context and to explain why the men's were so few and far between. So after the claims that Bloho made, again, I got digging. I dug a ton of information about Bloho's sexual past, like for example, the fact that he craves big black cocks that is now established and confirmed 100%. But I knew there was more, because in part 19, I sort of touched on the topic of bestiality. And I said that it was interesting to see how much Blow talked about fucking animals. And the more I thought about that, the more I realized that it wasn't just a few uh, details here and there. It was actually a pattern of behavior, a pattern of behavior that aligned with the many sexual deviances we're going to be discussing today. Because as we saw, he clearly is not straight. Blow is not a straight male. I think that's evident to anyone who actually looks at him and listens to him talk for a second or two. There's something going on with the guy. But it doesn't stop at homosexuality because it would be too easy. What we found last time is that he actually might be a gay furry. In this case, it goes even deeper because there is a character that I never mentioned that I think is relevant because once you look at it through the scope again of the furry dom or whatever they want to call themselves, you start actually seeing it through a different lens. And that character is Backpuss. For the people who don't remember, there used to be a time where Bloho was going everywhere with a plushie of a cat. And he called it Backpuss. And it went to the point where it was always in the background of his videos. And on top of that, he took it with him to expose. Picture a 40-year-old man going to expose to meet teenagers carrying a plushie with him. That's already pathetic. Like on a surface level, it's fucking ridiculous. He would take pictures with the thing. Imagine the cringe of having, of ha being a grown man and having to pose with Bloho, who is also posing with a little like plushie of a cat. On top of that, back puss, back puss, back pussy. So like a pussy you can carry around. I'm sure that this, this is supposed to be a joke again, but it's, it doesn't sound like a joke in your mouth, Bloho. It sounds like something that you actually wish was real. Am I the only one who sees that all of these jokes seem to be more than just jokes? It's very strange. And the cat only disappeared when he switched to his macho phase with like the reloading of the ammo. But 
that was a period of time that lasted for at least two years. And I've never seen people actually point out the fact that it might actually be one other of the many kings that Oppo Hemingway seems to have. Kings that actually point to him being sort of a sexual predator. Now, I know these are serious allegations, and therefore, I'm going to provide some pretty solid evidence to what I'm actually going to prove to you in this video. That being that Bloho is actually a sexual predator for real. It's not a joke. There is a lot of information and signs pointing to Bloho actually being attracted to children. And the first one that I want to discuss with you guys today is the forum posts. Because I actually got to digging. Since he posted so much about his gay fantasies on these forums, I actually bet and imagine that he must have posted even worse things. And I hit a gold mine because there are more messages of him posting pedophiliac shit on these forums than there are stuff related to his fetishes about being fucked in the ass. For example, I found a quote of him from 2009 stating, I would have sex with her older daughter outside of marriage. An older daughter that at the time the woman he was referring to was 17. So she was a minor. She wasn't legal. And on top of that, look at the sentence. I'll have sex with her older daughter. Who speaks like that? What grown man is going to use that type of vocabulary? Her daughter. Why not just refer to her as a woman or as a young woman? Why say daughter? The word daughter is so strange in that context. And it continues. Bloho himself was to state at some point that he is into petite women. Now, if you just hear any man say that, you're going to say, okay, well, he's into women smaller than him. But Blo is 5'4". He's a midget. What constitutes a petite woman to a dwarf? Unless you're going to go for like the bottom of the bottom, the smallest Asian lady you can find, you're not going to find girls that are that small compared to 5 feet 4. And Asian women are never going to go for Bloho because they have standards. They actually go for status. Bloho can never pull a lady from Vietnam or China. It's not possible. So we have to look elsewhere. What else could be a petite woman to that guy, to that manlet? Well, I think the answer is fairly clear. Now, I understand that all of that looks like extrapolations and it's look like, it looks like I'm splitting hair. But I can promise you one thing. I did not go into my investigation trying to find information about that in particular. I went into it blind. What I'm presenting to you right now is information that I myself discovered all at once and I'm going to offer to you crescendo. It starts slow. I'm trying to prime you into the idea that what I'm saying is actually based on reality. So that's for the first weird forum post that in reality don't really prove anything. Now, the one thing that it proves, however, is that there is something weird about the guy. Especially when you consider that the, all of these messages coincide with the fact that he's mentioned pedophilia on his channel several times. Meaning that on his actual lifting channel, there are several videos by Bloho where he mentions the topic, he mentions, mentions children. And most of the time, it's to defend himself. It's not to discuss the topic as a whole or as a concept. It's in a way to protect his character. That's, that's strange, right? If anyone started making several videos in a row saying, hey guys, just so you know, I'm not a rapist, you would start asking questions. Unless they got accused by someone in public. But in this case, there was no such thing. That is actually the one thing that I found strange. No one had ever accused him of being a pedophile. A lot of people accuse him of being, a, being racist, of being a liar, being a thief, being someone who doesn't know anything, being a fat fuck. All things that he tends to ignore. He doesn't seem to be bothered about it, or if he is bothered about it, he makes answer videos, but based on what someone else has said. The pedophilia video, it was out of the blue. No one actually extended these accusations towards him, which is saying a lot because he was accused of everything under the sun because he did everything. He's such a terrible human that whatever you throw his way is going to stick. But this one came out of his own mouth. And the type of defenses and things he said to protect his image and to actually try to convince people he wasn't into children is really weird. For example, listen to this one. On a forum, when trying to actually counter the arguments of people saying he was a pedophile, which didn't exist, he stated that People online were accusing him of luring children in with ice cream because he named his channel Ice Cream Fitness. That's clearly a troll. That's clearly someone who looked at the channel's name and tried to make a funny joke out of that. What normal human wouldn't have understood that? A normal male would have understood that, but he didn't. He immediately saw it as an accusation of pedophilia and he tried to defend himself from that stupid accusation. Why? 
Maybe because he has something on his conscience, maybe because he knows something that we don't. On top of that, he makes up, because maybe he made it up, stupid straw man to distract from what I think is the reality, because this is a shit accusation. Of course, you can't base someone's potential pedophilia on the fact that their channel is named Astream Fitness. This makes absolutely no fucking sense. So why would he try to debunk that? Well, maybe because it's easier to debunk that very thing rather than the other accusation he received. He also claimed, and I shit you not, I cannot be a pedophile because I don't have any candy in my house. First and foremost, that's a lie. You have candy in your house. Look at how fat you are. I know you stuff your face full of Twinkies all the time. You have candy everywhere in the house. That's the reason why you have no teeth, by the way. It's because you drink soda and you eat candy. If the beaters don't get your ass in the next at least five years, I will be extremely surprised. The fact that you still have your two legs is a fucking miracle. So for the candy part, uh, that's bullshit. We all know that you have some. But also, what the fuck is that argument? So you don't have candy in your house, it means it's not, you're not a predator? What does he think predators are exactly? People like men with a moustache and glasses that go outside with candy and like put them on a trail and attract kids into a white van? Like that was in the 70s, bro. Nowadays, predators are on the internet like you. You have the exact profile of a pedophile. And actually, he knows it because he repeats all the time in these videos as well that he doesn't look like a pedophile and that people point to him being a pedophile because of his looks. Well, I mean, if I were to pick someone who molests children out of a lineup and I saw you, I would point at you with my two hands. I would actually take out my shoes and point at you with my toes as well because you fit the bill. Bald head, ugly, socially inept. Like, you fit every single criteria possible. So there's a reason why people think that's a little bit strange. It's because you are. But I'm not even basing my accusations on the way he looks. That's too easy. It's on what he said. And that's the first part. It's these weird attempts at defending himself from accusations that never came. Like he's feeling guilty about something that only he knows. And that guilt also is very pronounced in his videos because there is one in particular that I know the OGs are going to recognize immediately where he goes into a store with Moon Cookie and she films and the first thing flying out of his fat mouth is, I'm not a pedophile. Like, he doesn't have, to, he didn't even say hi or can I buy this? No, first thing he says is, hey, just so you know, bro, I don't fuck kids. Who does that? Like, what well-adjusted person does that? It's really strange. The exact quote that he told that poor store clerk was, despite having a beard, I'm not a pedophile. He said that because apparently people on the internet called him one. But again, why would that guy in the store know any of that? And why are you trying to convince him that you're not one? It looks again to me like he's desperately trying to, to push away accusations that no one is aware of beyond him. Something that you see again on the forums. Another gorgeous quote from that guy. A guy that again states that he doesn't like kids. I have historically preferred women who have at least reached puberty. I repeat myself, I'm like a broken record, but do you know of a normal guy who is like in, your, in his 30s or 40s who has to say that? If you met your bro and your bro stopped you and say, hey, just so you know, I fuck women who are like older than 16, or I fuck women who, had their, who have had their periods, you would cut ties with that guy because it's like, okay, well, I don't know what's in the back of your car or in your basement, but if I were to bet between an old car that you're trying to restore or a pile of kids that you molested, I'm betting all of my money on the pile of kids. It's the same with Bloho. Why would you try to actually say that to people? Unfucking prompted again. No one asked him that. He, out of the blue, just clicked on record and said, guys, for the record, I like my women of age. Very weird, very suspicious. He also commented about how he had friends who were attracted to 14-year-old girls, which he sees as normal. He tried to defend that behavior. He didn't say that he liked 14-year-olds, but he did say that he knew grown men that liked 14-year-olds and that it was normal. He even spoke about one of his friends who posted a comment under a 14-year-old girl birthday post well, she says, yeah, I'm 14. And the guy posted something like, oh, I'm in trouble. Like, oh, you're 14, but I'd still fuck you. And then I'd, get, I'd be sent to jail. Bloho calls that type of man his friend. Birds of a feather flock together. Pedos of 
a molester grub kids together. We have to make a new quotation or idioms for that shit. If you associate with people who do this stuff and you defend them, aren't you just like them? Like, again, would you do that if one of your bros fucked a girl, a baby? Because 14 year old, you're a baby, right? You're not an adult. Would you go out of your way to defend them? Well, he absolutely did that. He actually made a full fucking length video on this discussing the Milo Yanapopoulos uh, incident. For the people who don't remember, Milo was a gay guy, who was right wing, whatever. And at some point in the podcast, he defended relationships between underage boys, we're talking 13 year olds, and older men, we're talking 50 year olds, stating that it was normal. Because in his logic, in his, in his matrix of understanding of the word, that was an okay thing to do. It's an okay thing for a grown ass man to hunt younger boys. That was for Milo. But again, Bloho vouched for him. And he vouched for him by saying that. And again, these are direct quotations that you can find on his channel. Because the videos were re-uploaded re afterwards. Since girls are having their puberty younger, then it's perfectly normal for men to try to have sex with them. This came from Bloho's mouth. No doubt he's trying to defend himself from pedophile accusations. Look at the shit he says. He's basically saying that as long as she's had her puberty, she's fair game. That's verbatim what he says there. And he continues by saying that we are attracted to their pheromones and therefore we cannot control our attraction towards them. This is typically the type of speech you will hear from men who are attracted by children, who are attracted by very young teenagers, who try to utilize biology as an excuse, as an explanation, to put the blame on the kids that they're going to molest. This is, this is textbook behavior. And this came from his mouth again. It was the time period when he was obese and people thought he was in a wheelchair. That's when he stated that. The excuse of pheromone might be the worst excuse I've ever heard in my life. Can you imagine him in front of a judge trying to explain that? Well, yes, I, I molested that kid, but it's because of pheromones. I couldn't resist it. It's pheromones. Bro, there's something called self-control. There's also something called not being attracted towards children and actually being attracted towards grown-ass women your age and not preying on people that have the same intelligence as you. Even that is insulting teenagers because most teenagers are much more intelligent than Blow. But it's very telling that he would actually hunt that type of person, that type of woman, because most predators are stunted intellectually. They're very stupid. And it's part of the reason why they prey on young girls. It's because it's the only thing that they can get. But to have one that actually defends it using biology as an excuse is, is unheard of. I don't understand why he said that and didn't immediately delete the video. Like, I get that you want to deal with kids, but to actually go out and say it, this is how arrogant he gets. He doesn't understand that people will actually listen to what he say and actually come out and attack him based on it. And that type of behavior, the things that he said on camera, actually materialized because under a picture of a young girl, and by young girl, I mean 13, 14 on the forum, he stated that she was definitely underage, he recognized that she was a kid, and then he added, if she lost the hat, I would hate it though. Straight from the horse's mouth, straight from the roach's mouth, rather, he outright admitted that he would be willing to fuck a kid. This is Bloho. This is what I discovered when I actually dug deep into this forum post. I was mind-blowing, and I'm sure that you're mind-blowing. Maybe you knew this shit. But I was aware he was a weirdo, that he was a sexual deviant, but to that point, like, I mean, to be gay, I mean, there's there nothing wrong with being gay. To be a gay furry is already weird, but to be a pedophile? Yeah, that's all Boy Hemingway right there. But, but I'm just getting started. It's just a warm-up because the hell show actually continues because it's not limited to just Woods. He admitted to having sent dick pics to other users on bodybuilding.com back in 2010. And some of these people came out later and stated that they were minors when this happened. So Bloho actually sent dick pics to teenagers, to boys who were 16, 17 year olds. And even though he might not have known about that, it's very weird that he would just send dick pics to whoever. It really puts into question the type of discussions he has with his clients. I know that some of them reached out to me and said that they were uncomfortable because he kept talking about sex with them. He kept making sexual references, talking about his girlfriend, talking about hookups. 
At first, I thought he was just trying to brag, but now the more I think about it, the more I realize that maybe he was trying to groom these kids because he sent dick pics to kids and he himself admitted that it was a trade of his. He said in the forum post, I'm a bit of an exhibitionist. That's when he was discussing sending nudes to people on the very platform. He didn't seem to mind. Now, I want you, and I know it's going to be disgusting, but for the sake of the video, to imagine Bloho wearing one of these long coats going around like kids parks and exposing himself to kids. Isn't that perfectly fitting? Don't you see him doing that type of shit? He fits the bill 100%. But of course, he's a coward. So where is he going to do that stuff? On the internet, because we now know that he has a ton of fetishes and one of them seems to be to expose himself to very young children. Connect that with the fact that he makes videos half naked. For a long time, he made videos wearing booty shorts and covered in baby oil. Who is watching these videos? Some of these videos are watched by his young subscribers and also by his young clients because most of his clients are very young. We discussed the fact that he used to make videos in like a Spartan robe or he used to actually flash his panties on camera on purpose. All of that is a pattern of behavior as well. It's part of his fetish. And it's important to say and to remind you, Bloho, that for someone like you who seems to know so much about Texas law, you seem to forget a very important part of the law system of the law state that you love so much. In Texas, it's a felony to exchange messages or pictures of a sexual nature with minors because it's considered soliciting. And even if you don't go to their house or they don't go to yours, it is still seen as a felony. You should know that. Meaning that if one of your clients pulls all of these Skype calls when you're shirtless in your closet and there's enough messages of you or even recordings of you talking about sexual things, fucking girlfriends or whatever, it constitutes soliciting. Would you like some of these clients to actually report that to the police? Because I can have that happen like this. Because what you're doing is wrong. The more I learn about this guy, the more I realize that all the things I thought were innocent or funny are still funny, but they're also despicable when you look at them through that lens in particular. This guy is dangerous. He's not a predator just in jest. He is actually a potential molester. Listen to what he said again in a forum post. He wished that he could go back in time with everything he knew to be able to groom young girls into his own mold. That was when he was in his 30s. This is his words. He himself is admitting that he has a fantasy. He wants to groom children. Can we say now that the fantasy has become rowdy? Even though he has access to a very finite amount of very young clients, it's still one or two. And these, for the most part, as I've already explained, are mentally ill. They're mentally stunted. They can think for themselves. So we have someone on our hands that is actively hunting debilitated teenagers. The joke ends there, I think. It's not a joke anymore. It's becoming very serious. And again, the only proof I have is what I'm presenting right now. So it's not like I'm going to build a case or whatever, but I want these things to be known because all of that has been floating around the internet for a very long time and I never hear anyone talk about it. There is a chance that all of the things that I'm studying right now are just the surface of the iceberg and will not actually privy of the most disgusting stuff that he's done. And I wish I could stop the video there. I wish I could tell you that that's all that I have. And that's it's all hearsay and allegations and I don't have any proof. The issue is that, of course, I dug deeper because there was more to be discovered. With Bloho, it's something I've already seen and something that I'm sure you guys are very familiar with. When he insults someone, it's always in a way to defend himself. And therefore, you can always learn something from his insults. So, for example, when he constantly tries to defend himself by saying that he's not a pedophile, it gives an indication that he might be one. But something else happened and it's something that actually put me on the tracks of this entire scenario way before Bloho came out and accused me of posting CP. And that was when he actually called me a pedophile. I think it was four or five months ago when he was going on a rant calling me a, a Muslim, calling me ugly and smelly, all of the things that he detests or that he is himself. He also had it that I was a potential predator. And that, that immediately made me think because he only projects when he insults. So this meant that a part of him feared being called a predator. And it was confirmed immediately when he said that my channel was deleted because of that. So that is when I actually started to get on the case and look at this in particular. Because he always, always 
projects his thoughts onto others, and he always blames others for his thoughts. And that is when I actually fell into the rabbit hole of degeneracy that is the life of Jason Bloho. Because in 2008, he stated that there is a story of extreme ritualistic pedophilia on my father's side. Unprompted again. Why would someone say that? And it's not the only thing that actually came out. And that one thing is one thing that I never really wanted to talk about because I thought it wasn't interesting. And also because I had my reserves. I was trying to, in a sense, protect some of the people that were involved in this, in this entire scenario. But since Blow decided to open his fat fucking mouth and lie about me, I'm just going to pull out of the stops. I have no limits now. What I'm going to talk about now is the story of Uncle Mike. For those who don't know, Uncle Mike is Bloho's uncle, who he accused of raping him when he was a young boy. He claimed to have been abused by his uncle for years and years. It's something that he insisted upon. There are very disgusting stories told by Bloho about his uncle, about the things that he actually put him through. And I want to make something clear right now. I'm not making fun of someone who was molested, because I don't think that happened. I think that this is a lie. The reason why I didn't want to talk about it is because Uncle Mike is dead. And from what I gathered, the guy wasn't a bad person. I don't want to pull him into this situation. But in this scenario, I want to actually defend his name. Because I think that he was falsely framed by Bloho. I think that what happened is that Bloho came up with this story to deflect from his own behaviors. And the proof I have of that is that the story of Uncle Mike and the story of the ritualistic pedophilia only came up after he started becoming accused of being a pedophile by people that we still don't know about. So why would he wait so long to talk about these things? It's really weird. He only does that to deflect. If he truly had something like this happen to him, why didn't he share it before? Why didn't he just not talk about it at all? Why did he wait until it was convenient to reveal it? Well, in my opinion, it's because, again, it never happened. It's a lie. We know that his ex-wife actually corroborated the story. But from what we know of her, he only told her that story to excuse his laziness and inability to actually be a man and to actually provide for her. In a sense, he again blamed it on the PTSD, which adds to the list of shit he's done in the past. Blo, you have now claimed stolen valor. You have claimed to have a handicap you don't have. Now you're claiming to have been molested. There is not a circle of hell deep enough for your sins. It's insane the type of shit he's done and gotten away with. If you think his life is bad and you feel sorry about him, and you saw the type who defend him and you listen to what I'm saying right now, I hope I'm changing your mind. He pretended to have been molested by an uncle just to garner sympathy and so as to not receive blame for his own behavior. It's another lie. It's another lie by our boy. There is actually no proof that this ever happened to him. And it's especially disgusting because from what we know of the rest of the family, his uncle and aunt were always supportive of him. Can you imagine this? You open your doors to a little fucking ingrate like Bloho. You feed him. You play with him. You actually help him develop as a man. And what does he do in return? He pretends that you actually molested him as a kid. It's, it's mind-blowing how much of a despicable piece of shit you must be to actually do that to your own family. All of that to not have to actually face responsibilities. But it's something that he's always done. It's the reason why I wasn't surprised when I finally connected the dots. It's because he always throws his own family under the bus to explain his failures and to actually excuse for his behavior. For example, to prove to you that the Uncle Mike scenario is most likely a bullshit lie, Bloho swore on his mother's grave that he had never engaged in stolen valor. He also swore on his mother's grave that he was a military member, that he used to be part of the military. On his own mother, his mother from what we know who was the person who loved him the most. That didn't stop him from actually allowing himself to lie on her behalf. All of that to cover up his ass for the fake milk story. He also lied about his father's past. He pretended that his father was a green bearer, which was bullshit. All of that to try to create these nebulous military connections, to try to explain his past as a, as a sharpshooter, also bullshit. He invented a story about working as an engineer for his father's firm, when in reality he was doing manual labor. So he was trying to cover his work history of being unemployed for 20 years, again by lying about his father. 
and he tried to explain his weird behavior by pretending to have been abused by him. So that's again a pattern. He pretended that the two most important males in his family abused him, his father physically and his uncle sexually. He claimed that his father beat him up, that his father actually hit him with a pipe, etc., etc. All things I've covered in past episodes that have been disproven. From what we know, Bloho, the reason why your father was disproving of you and didn't like you is because you were soft and you were a pathological liar. And he was correct. He was right from the get-go. From the second he saw your rat face when you came onto this earth and it was your first day, he immediately could sense that you were going to be a fuck-up and he was proven correct. It went to the point that at some point he was living in a trail trash park with his girlfriend, living with his gr girlfriend's grandma, and in some of the videos he trash talks the grandma. He complains that the grandma is making too much noise. Bloho, it's not your fucking house. You are a parasite. You're lucky that, that granny was nice enough to actually welcome you into her house and give you a place to live. Every time I make videos about Bloho, my dogs go crazy. And you know why? It's because they are howling for revenge. They want Nova to be avenged. And I am on their side today because, as you can sense, I am fucking pissed. So this is, again, all of the things that he has done to his own family that I wanted to present to prove to you that it's not beneath him to actually put other people under the bus. If we're going to talk about dogs, he blamed the death of his dog on terrorists. He pretended that terrorists infiltrated his house and killed his dog. How idiotic is that lie? Just because he killed his dog via neglect, he tried to pin it on jihadis, on Muslims. Who is going to buy that lie? Well, certainly not me. No one is also going to buy the lie that you gained weight because of your ex-wife or that your apartment was disgusting because of moon cookie. All of these things are things you've done to your life and that you have to face. Which leads us directly again to all of that stuff about ritualistic pedophilia. Why would Bloho come out of his way to lie about that, to make up this story about his family being involved in pedophilia? Why would he lie about one of the most sinister things on earth, which is being molested by a family member? For what purpose? Well, I think that the purpose was a deflection. He was trying, in a sense, to project what he has done himself onto people of his family so as to, in a sense, dust his tracks. Because Bloho has stated in the past that people who get molested when they are young have one out of three chances of becoming pedophiles themselves. Doesn't that sound like someone's excuse to explain why they are attracted to kids, why they molested children? If you look at it in the context of his previous lies, it seems to me like he came up with the molestation lie to explain why he became the way he became. But the situation with Uncle Mike most likely is a lie. The only thing that remains is that it's the fact that he is attracted to kid. And therefore, this leads us to an event that a lot of people know about, but they don't know what really happened. There was a specific time in his life when he actually got caught touching a kid. And I think I can pinpoint this exact moment. It was when he was 16, because we know that there was a period of time during his life when his family had to move urgently, meaning that overnight they had to bounce. They had to pack their bags and leave. But we never got an explanation for that. And even Bloho, who is a master liar and lies all the time, wasn't able to produce an explanation for that. So what could be the reason? Well, how much do you want to bet that it was actually because of something he did? How much do you want to bet that it's because he did, he did something horrible and to protect him, his family tried to actually move him away from that environment? Keep in mind that this is a person, Bloho, whose entire family disowned him. His entire family. If you had a kid, how much would it take for you to disown him? How much would it take for you to say, okay, I'm cutting ties, it's enough? Because keep in mind that his family disowned him way before the fake milk stuff. They didn't wait for his entire internet spill to actually cut ties with him. They did it way, way before that, when he was still a young man. Why? What could be the reason? For me, if I had a son and he killed someone, I wouldn't disown him. I would be extremely ashamed, but I would still be by his side. But if I learned that my son had touched a kid, I would disown him immediately because that is the one thing that is absolutely unforgivable. So I think that this indicates that is something that is something very obscure and very nebulous and bad that happened in his past. And I think that's exactly what happened. I think he touched a kid. And this is a doubt I had in my mind for a long time because, again, he was so intent on calling me and calling other people pedophiles and projecting all of that stuff onto other people that 
it looked to me like there was something he didn't want revealed. Keep in mind that he also intently insisted on people not looking into his background when he was actually lying about being a military member. And I always also saw it as strange because if he knew his background was, in a sense, impossible to access, why would he insist on that? I think it's because he was afraid that someone was going to dig up that story, that someone was going to actually look into it and realize what he had done in the past. Now, in terms of police records, there is none because they fled. Again, they, they, they actually fled before there could be any police investigation. And the one arrestation that we have shows that he didn't have any history of, of past misconduct. So he was actually correct. He was never convicted as a predator, but it means nothing because since I had that, that doubt in my mind and I wanted to confirm it, what I did is in the past month, I contacted a bunch of people that I know had connections with him and of people who actually worked towards exposing Bloho for the past seven years. And guess what I found? They all told me the same story without a single difference in the way they told it which should be impossible. These are different parties. How come they all told me the same story? Unless they were all, all connected and trying to create a, a conspiracy against Bloho, but I doubt it because I reached out to people that weren't even connected to the internet thing. They had no idea of the entire Blahatism movement. And what they told me is this. And for this one, I quote, because it's important that you hear the exact sentence. The Blaha family had to flee in the middle of the night because something happened between him, Bloho, and a kid. This is the version of the facts I heard from more than a dozen people. And you know what's fucked up? I even saw that same version corroborated on internet forums of people who stated they had connections with Bloho, knew about his past, and it's exactly what they said. You will find this exact sentence around the internet if you look for these exact terms. What are the chances that this is just a hoax? And what are the chances that it's actually correct? What is the possibility that our boy anyway, in the past, actually diddled a kid and had his family cover up his ass and they moved away all for the sake of protecting his life? I think that it's fairly, fairly bulletproof. And it's actually corroborated again by all of the information I already provided for you. Look at the type of shit this guy says. Is this the type of thing that a normal straight or gay man would say? No. These are the words of someone who is actually attracted to kids. Keep in mind that when he was actually trying to avoid being sent in front of a judge, one of the main reasons why is because he was petrified. It was stated in the one arrestation document we have about him when he got caught with an illegal firearm that he couldn't even talk in front of the judge. He had the intelligence of a third grader. I think it's because he's dumb, but it's also because he was afraid of what the judge might actually unveil. And this happened two times. It also happened in the UK. He refused to show up to the trial. Isn't that suspicious? We know he's a coward. We know he was going to lose that trial, but to not even show? Why wouldn't he want to show? When I think it's because he's deeply afraid of justice. And this connects to the fact that he repeated several times on videos that he is not a convicted pedophile. Why would you say that? And why would you add the convicted? The thing with Blow is that he always tells half lies. Saying that he's not a convicted pedophile doesn't mean he's not a pedophile. It just means that he's never got caught. So why would he even say that? And look at all of his attempts also to present the police as his friends. His insistence also as to make sure no one looks into his past. All of that is so strange. And all of that also, in a sense, confirms what I already thought. There are videos by Exposed TV that he actually, uh, where actually shows all of the messages I spoke about. The forum posts have been saved. The videos where he talks about the pheromones, about fucking a 14 year old, all of that is still out there. So it's impossible at this point to ignore all of this information, which by the way, I would have never actually come across if it weren't for Bloho opening his fat fucking mouth and trying to, for some reason, push all of that shit onto me. Jason, you never fucking learn, do you? You knew I was going to do that. You knew I was going to find that stuff. I found everything there is to know about you. Do you want to continue this little game? Because I can continue. How about I call your sister? I would love to hear the story from her own mouth. How about I start digging into your past more? I can contact people from your old schools. I can find them like this. It would be very easy. I'm sure that they have a lot of stories to tell about Jason Bloho. And it's all because of you. If you had just shut your mouth again, I would have maybe let it go. Because I did my job. But now... You did it. 
you started the movement again. So what I'm going to do is, because I can't just sit on my ass now, I'm going to bring back the fake milk character study. You gave me a lot of information on your live streams. I also have a lot of information I gathered about your past relationships. I have information about the racist shit you've done. So I'm going to continue exposing you because I could have tolerated you if you were just a pervert, if you were just stupid and a lol cow. But now we're getting into the point where you're dangerous. And therefore, it is my duty now to fuck with you as much as humanly possible. Good job, Loho. Once again, you have managed to fuck up your life even more by your own arrogance and stupidity. I'm going to leave you with that. And I'm going to see you for part 21 of the Fake Muck Character Study coming out maybe next month.